This video is going to talk about piecewise defined functions. And the thing that you need to remember about piecewise defined functions, it's a bunch of different graphs, but it's not the whole graph, it's just pieces. We're going to look at a certain part of the domain, so we only want little pieces in our graph, a bunch of little pieces. So the domain is going to be what defines those little pieces. We also have to talk about continuous and not continuous when we talk about piecewise defined functions. A continuous graph would be like a when you draw a line, your pencil stays on the graph for the whole line from arrow to arrow, or even from endpoint to endpoint if we only have a section of it. But when you have pieces, sometimes you're going to have to lift your pencil to get to another part of the graph. So that gives you a not continuous graph. Let's look at our first example here. It says that we have this x plus 1, but it's only between negative 2 and 2 in the x's. In fact, it doesn't even include 2 over here. And then we have the x, and that's going to be from 2, including 2, up to 4, and including 4. Again, that's what this part A is telling you, but we want to graph that one. So let's graph and say that if I had x equal negative 2, then it would be negative 2 plus 1. And negative 2 plus 1 is going to be equal to negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1 should be on my graph. And if I let x equal 0, so I'd have 0 plus 1, which is going to be... 1, so 0, 1 should be on my graph. And then we have the 2 is our other endpoint. So we need to check that one out for sure. 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. So 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. But it doesn't include that one because it doesn't have an equal in the inequality. So my graph only goes from this negative 2, 1 up to that 2, 3 and not including it. And then the next part of the graph, I'll do that over here and we'll do that in a different color. We have just x. So when x equal 2, it's going to be 2 or 2, 2 would be on our graph down here. And then we go from 3 and that's just going to give us x. So 3, 3 is going to be on our graph. And then 4, 4 would be on our graph and it's included because the 4 has an inequality that includes it. So I have a line between these two points and they're both filled in. And we can see now that we have this graph. So part B says, what's the domain? Well, it starts at negative 2. There's nothing over here beyond negative 2 to the left. So it starts at negative 2 and it includes it. And it goes all the way. And here at 2, it's in the red, it's not included, but it is included. There is a y value at x equal 2 on the blue line. So we can say that it goes from negative 2 all the way over to 4. There is some value on one of the graph or the other that has an x value for every number in that interval. We want to talk about being continuous or not continuous. And here's where you see that we have that not continuous thing happening. Okay, I had to lift my pencil from up here to drop down to the blue. So it's not continuous and then we've drawn our function. Let's graph this. So we have 2x plus 3 when x is less than 0. So we just need to get a couple points here. So if we try f of say negative 1, we'd have 2 times negative 1 plus 3 and negative 2 plus 3 would be equal to 1. So negative 1, 1 would be on our graph which would be this point right here. If we tried let's say like negative 3 just to get a second point it'd be again putting it plugging it in you could probably do this in your head but just in case negative 6 plus 3 is going to be negative 3 so negative 3 negative 3 would be on our graph it's going to be anything less than 0 so it doesn't include the 0 if we put 0 in here 2 times 0 would be 0 plus 3 so 0 3 would be on our graph but it's going to be an open circle because it doesn't include that point but then it goes through all the rest of these points and put an arrow on it because it'll be all the rest of them forever. Now the second piece, x squared plus 1. We're only going between 0 and almost 2. So we do f of 0 and that's just going to be 1. 0 squared plus 1 would be 1. So 0, 1 would be on this graph and it is included. And then we could try f of 1 and if we do 1 it'd be 1 squared plus 1 or just 2. So 1, 2 is on our graph. And then 2, f of 2 would give us 2 squared which is 4 plus 1 is going to be 5. So we have the point 2, 5 and it's included. No, it's not. So it's an open circle and it starts from here at 0, 1 and then goes up to that point but not including it. And notice it's just a little piece of that graph. Now we go to f the next piece and it says 5, our graph is going to be equal to 5 whenever x is greater than 2. Again, it doesn't include 2. It starts at 2 and goes forever at this value 5 as a constant. 
So our graph is going to look like this. Okay, the arrows tell me it's going to keep going forever. So now let's look at what we need to do with it. It says, is the graph continuous? This is, you ask yourself, can you pick up your pencil? If you can pick up the pencil, then no. If you can pick up your pencil, then it's not continuous. So anytime there's gaps in your graph, it's not going to be continuous. Now it asks me to evaluate several points. H of negative 3. Negative 3 fits in the domain of x is less than 0. It does not fit in for 0, between 0 and 2, and it doesn't in, go into the domain of x is greater than 2, so this is going to be 2 times negative 3 plus 3 only. And we already did that one. We found out that that was negative 3. If I do h of 2, well, it doesn't fit into less than 0. It doesn't fit into between 0 and 2 because it doesn't include 2 here. And it also doesn't include 2 here. So 2 is not included anywhere, so it's not, let's say, not in domain. And then we have h of 3. And h of 3 would go into this part of the graph that where x is greater than 2. And that just tells us that it's going to be equal to 5. Now it asks us to find the domain and range. Well, the domain is going to be from negative infinity because it goes this way forever, and then it goes across here, and all those points are included, zeros included, keep going on and on forever, and it's going to be all except for this 2, because that's the only place where there was no value. When x was 2, there was no y value. Over here, when x was 0, I had a value here, but not on the first piece, but as long as there's a value somewhere when x is 0, then we can include it. So we would say that it goes from negative infinity up to 2, but not including 2, and then union 2 to infinity. So that in includes everything but that 2. Again, here it works because we do have a point at x equals 0. It's just on the second piece. Now the range. The range goes from negative infinity, because it's going down forever, and it goes up just to this 5. It doesn't go any higher than 5, because the last piece just says it's equal to 5. So let's do another one. Graph the function, and this time we're going between negative 3 and 2. So we look at x squared. If it were negative 3 squared, we have 9 be this point right here. And it includes it. If we did negative 2, it would be 4. And if we did 1, it would be 1 squared is 1. If we did 0, 0 squared is 0. And if we did 1, it would be 1. And 2 squared is 4 but it's an open circle at 2, 4 because it does not include the 2. So that's a quadratic and you can see that it's a quadratic. You should have known that it was going to be a quadratic just by looking at this x squared, but you might not have known exactly how it was shaped. So it's good. Lots of times you can just do endpoints, but on quadratics you need to get several points so you can see how it curves. Now, when x is greater than or equal to 2, it's going to be 4. Well, that means that now for this second piece, in fact, let me do it in a different color. The second piece, I'm going to get to include that point, and it's all the rest of them, and they will all have 4s as their y value. So let's go and then answer our questions. Is the con graph continuous? This time it is continuous because this point was open for the first piece, but it got closed from the second piece. So 2 has a value. When x is 2, there is a y value for that one, so it is a con continuous graph h of negative 3. We did that one up here. That's equal to 9. But re notice it doesn't fit into the second piece because it's not greater than or equal to 2. h of 2, it's greater than or equal to 2. So I can only look at this bottom piece. I don't want to look at the top piece because it's not equal to 2 there. x is only equal to 2 in the bottom part, so we know that that one's 4. And then we have h of 3. Well, 3 doesn't fit in the domain of negative two, 3 to 2. But if it does fit into x is greater than 2, and so we again have a 4. We evaluate it at the second piece. Our domain starts here at negative 3. You notice I didn't put an arrow on here because it was great, less than or equal to negative 3. So it starts at negative 3, and it goes forever. This arrowhead tells me that I'm going to have all the rest of the x's, so it goes to infinity. And I need a bracket here at 3 because the absolute value here said including negative 3. Now range, it only went as high as 9. There's no arrowhead again here, so it only went as high as 9, and it only went as low as 0. So the smallest value first, it included 0, and it went up to 9 and included that one too. 